Hi guys, this is episode two of the Free House Challenge. We're in the week five stage, so we're gonna go inside, take a look around, and see what progress we've made. So guys, before we go inside and take a look around, I just wanna to explain to you how we acquired this property because it's quite creative. So we don't actually own the property yet. We've entered into something called an exclusivity agreement with the seller. And the way that we've done that is, is we've secured a 5% deposit with our solicitors. And if we pull out, we lose the deposit. And if the seller decides to pull out, they'll be responsible for our cost that we've incurred. To date, we've paid the seller also a couple of months rent. Uh, while we're going through the cavancing process and that basically gives us the key early to start work so by the time we do actually exchange and complete we've got a really good head start on the works as i said it's week five and we're due to exchange tomorrow and complete next week so we've had a six week head start on the works which is great which means we're on the finance uh, facility which is in place uh, shorter so less interest but we're going to be covering off that uh, in this video what finance we've agreed on the property um, so stay tuned for that so coming through we have made some really good progress so this is now bedroom one. As you can see, we've taken out the chimney breasts on the side to reduce those just to maximize our space. We have also formed our en suites. We've also dropped our metal frame ready to run our services, so plumbing, electrics, and waste. And as you can see, the markings on the floor, uh, we're starting to run the first fix plumbing now. So all of the, uh, all of the pipe work, which you can see here, this is bedroom number two. We have got the ensuite. Again, we have um, taken out the chimney breast because there was two of those. We've fireballed those, bonded them in. Uh, we've also, uh, there was an ensuite here. So we've obviously stripped that all out and reduced that to open up the bedroom. Uh, so this is bedroom number two. Coming through, it's a little bit dark, but we can just about make this out. So this is the kitchen area. This is gonna be a 22 square meter kitchen. And what we've done is we've uh, obviously removed the off-suite area there, blocked in a window, but we've also created this opening. So we've started to get our kitchen designs back. Um, and this is obviously where our sinks will sit. So we've got some nice big openers there uh, as windows. And we've not done this before, but because this house is really big, on the ground floor. We're actually gonna have three bedrooms on the ground floor. So we've got a bedroom at the back, which is actually off of the kitchen. So we've opened up this area here for a single door for side access. And then here we're actually gonna have a fire lobby. So we'll have a fire door before you go into the bedroom. And that is necessary if there is a bedroom off of the kitchen. So coming through, you'll have a fire lobby um, for fire protection. And then we've got a 10 square metre bedroom at the back of the house. And also we've done an ensuite in that area. So it's back to back with the, uh, with the fire lobby. So this is gonna be a 10 square metre bedroom. So we've got three bedrooms on the ground floor. Let's go out to the garden and see what we've, uh, we've done out there. We've had the digger out here. We've been uh, scraping back. Um, it was obviously all overgrown, all the bramble uh, and all the bushes and we have put this type one down ready to be slabbed this area and as you can see we've reduced the garden size so we've put in a couple of fence panels the reason for that is the garden's quite long it's about 20 meters long um, so by keeping the garden full length we're just going to incur probably unnecessary cost and it also won't get used so we're going to do a courtyard style garden and we're just going to put a a gate in uh, and we're just gonna uh, leave the back of the garden uh, we'll obviously maintain it but we won't waste uh, unnecessary cost up there so we're gonna do a nice courtyard style garden bin store bike store and um, yeah it'll be a nice little space uh, for the for the occupants so uh, somebody asked me how I'm financing this uh, project. So I'm gonna cover that off in this video. So when we do eventually complete on the property, we've arranged uh, development finance for this. So that is for uh, the purchase and also for the build cost. The lender we use is commercial acceptances and they lend 70% of the purchase and 100% of the build cost. But that's obviously the gross numbers. So you've also got to net those down and take into account your uh, interest provision, their fees, uh, etc etc et so just to go through the the offer letter 
so uh, the lender is lending to us based on the six bed scheme, which got a valuation of 680,000 because um, that is what we've got planning for currently, which is a C4 uh, six bed status. Um, so the facility, the full facility is 408,000 and that is broken down that we've got an initial advance of 234,000. Uh, we obviously buying the property for 325. So we need to make up the difference between that and what we're buying the property for. And then the lender, obviously, plus our cost that is, obviously got stamp duty and our legal fees on top of that. And then the lender is lending us also 150,000, which is 100% of the conversion works. The bill cost, we've got, um, uh, some uh, some professional fees of four thousand pounds. That's that will be for the surveyor to come out to survey the property uh, to allow us to get the drawdowns on the development uh, finance, and also they have got a interest provision of twenty thousand, which is only six months. So even though we've asked for a twelve month facility, we're only doing uh, they've only stopped us or deducted out of our, our uh, initial loan uh, six months interest because we know that actually we've got the six months head start where we've entered into the exclusive agreement so we know that um, we will be uh, well within that six months uh, time uh, horizon uh, to get this project completed um, full plan and approved and refinanced so that is uh, the finance that we've arranged on this property so coming back through the kitchen we've, uh, we've also created this area here which is going to house the hot water cylinders uh, for the plumbing so up on the first floor we have started to form our rooms. So we've got a large off-suite here, which is for uh, one of the bedrooms, bedroom three, I believe it is. We've also had, we had this void, so we decided to put a communal toilet in place here. And we always like to do that because a lot of lenders like that you've got a communal toilet or at least a spare toilet, because if there's any issues with uh, any of the other toilets uh, as en suites, then that tenant has got um, a toilet to use. And in some cases I have heard that they have refused lending um, based on that. So it's always worth having a spare toilet. And we've got this big bedroom at the back, which is 13 square meters, the biggest one in the house. And it's got a really big ensuite. So this is gonna be a lovely room. Um, we've also done our fireboarding, bonded in the joints. We've dropped our metal frame ceiling so we can run our services again um, up on the first floor. And we've also started to create our markings. As I said, downstairs, our first fix plumbing is already going in. Uh, the electricians are on their way over in the next few days. We've started to create our markings on where we want our sockets, uh, where rads are gonna go and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we are at the first fix stage. We've also ordered uh, some replacement windows. We've re ordered uh, a single UPVC door uh, for uh, the kitchen and a few bits like that. And also on this one, we've actually put in our planning already. So we've put in our certificate of lawful use to turn the house from a C3 single dwelling to a C4 uh, six bed HMO. So it'll be about eight weeks before that comes back. So we've got a really good head start on that. So uh, once that comes back, we'll then go in for a uh, sui, sui generous application for the additional bedroom, which is the seventh bedroom. So making really good progress on the planning. We're ahead on that, we're ahead on the works and we don't even own the property yet, which is, uh, yeah, which is brilliant. So coming through, so we've had to uh, create this opening because in this area there's three bedrooms. So uh, we've got bedroom three, which is actually, actually this bedroom four, because we've got three at the back. So this is the smallest bedroom in the house, but that is 8.5 square meters, which is obviously the minimum space requirement. And then we've had to create this opening for the two uh, additional bedrooms. So that bed three, sorry, bed four, is the one that's gonna have the, uh, the nice large off suite down there. But we've also got bedroom number five here, which is gonna have an en suite. Uh, again, metal frame's been done in here. And then we've got uh, this other bed here, which is bed six with the en suite. And then the big bedroom at the back is bedroom seven. So making really, really good progress. Once we've done first fix uh, plumbing and electrics, I assume that's going to take maybe a week or two. We can then start closing up, ready for the plasterers to come in. 
So guys, that's the end of episode two. I hope you found that interesting. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and also subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna find out how to do this, so convert houses to high-end HMOs that cash flow really, really well, make sure you follow the HMO Academy. The link is in the description. Thank you.